I'm going to do a, another demo here on proper gasket removal. Now this is an important one. You're going to see a couple of different tools that I've laid out here that you're going to find in your toolbox. You guys have some type of gasket scraper. I believe you have this one in your snap-on mm -hmm. kits. Blue, blue point, yeah. You have a blue point one? Uh, it's going to be something that's shaped like this. What I want you to get a close-up of is see how there's a, a real flat machined edge here. And then over here we have an angled uh, machined off edge that's filed off this way that you guys can see on your scraper. So the proper way to use this tool is flat side down, handle up like this, and you basically take and scrape the gasket material off. Okay? So you can kind of see, am I putting any pressure? Can you guys tell right now? Yeah, you aren't putting any pressure. I'm putting no pressure. What I don't want to do is gouge or hurt the surface at all. Sometimes what you can do, you can see all the excess here. What I will uh, tend to do is there's no point in me putting a bunch of gasket material on bearings or surfaces where I don't want gasket material. I'd rather get it dumped onto here and then and get it outside of the engine. This engine is very simple in design, but when you start to get to our bigger engines, you might have little oil passages that do I want to get stuff in there that would block an oil passage. No, no. I don't want to get it into I don't want to stick gasket material through this hole which would get inside the lip of a seal and cause me a problem too. So protecting our work area is important, correct? Right. Do you notice how I grab that wire? Yeah. Every time, right? So just as a good habit here, we're going to protect our area. And on this here, you'll see most people want to scrape forward like this. Now watch what I'm going to do. i got a bunch of excess here, right? I'm going to take and go this way, just along the edge very lightly. And usually that will take and make it where it will just pull right off, okay? This is not my preferred tool. Some people like uh, just putty knives like this because they flex, they're bendable. <coughs> what I don't want to do is I don't want to round this edge and I don't want to round this inside edge. If you can imagine, this gets put on a machine when it's in a rough form like this and it gets put on a machine and it comes here and it machines this edge off perfectly true. So when it machines that with a sharp cutter bit, would you believe that this edge and this edge is sharp? Yep. Mm -hmm. And that's what we want because that's more real estate and it's a wider surface area. If you take and round this edge off and I round this edge off, what do I do to the width of that dis of this uh, mating surface? Make it smaller. smaller. I make it smaller. Is that a bad thing? Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Some people want to use sanding discs like this, not this grinder. They'll use an angle grinder like this but with these sanding discs that are rotating at high RPM and they want to try and drag a surface off that way, what are you doing to that surface? Grinding it down. You are grinding it. So then the next thing is people will say, well, I'll just go ahead and use sandpaper. and Maybe I'll even use wore out sandpaper. What are you going to do to that edge? Groove it. Yep. And if I put a lot of pressure over here, I'm going to create valleys and dips and anything that are going to be an absolute nightmare. These are called Rolox. Okay, so you've got this uh, cool little uh, quick insert here and you'd get the, the smaller one to fit this. And this just rotates in place and then you put it onto your uh, die grinder or whatnot as a, as a quick way to get rid of this. This is great for stuff like wood and removing uh, paint from window seals. This is not for motorcycle engines. Are you with me? Yeah. There's another one out there that I don't have here. I know I have some still at home. And they, they've got it. When they came out in the 90s, they were the coolest things ever, and they had little fingers on them. And I'll show you guys pictures in the classroom. And of these little fingers, uh, what would happen is they seemed like they're soft, and you could buy them in different grits. And everybody, like I said, thought they were the coolest thing in the world for moving gaskets. Well, GM, I think, was the first people that banned them from mechanics being able to use them, and they quit doing warranty claims because they had a, a Cadillac engine that had a head gasket problem, just a normal design issue, they, they recalled them, they put the head gaskets in. Well, the, as the Snap-on trucks and Mack trucks are running around, they were selling this type of Rolock disc with the little fingers. It, I mean, it felt like rubber. It, it felt like a, you know, just a bunch of little hairs, I guess, if you will, little uh, rubber flaps. And as mechanics were, you know, taking that material off, even that rubber was grinding those edges and creating divots in there. So imagine these, all these GM mechanics put the new head gaskets in, Put the engines together, and guess what failed right away? Seals. Head gasket. So GM went and thought, oh, maybe we didn't design it right. Had a second recall, and then what they were finding out was the mechanics were ruining the blocks with this new tool. 
So there, uh, a letter came out that said, do not use Rolock uh, on machine surfaces. It's a bad deal, and so on and so on. But I, I do see that they are still available. They're just not what we're going to use. So would you like to know how to do it right and not yeah. to have any problems? Yes. Yeah. Okay, what I'm going to show you, Honda in particular, on that training manual, tells you not to do. So they show and they demonstrate any of these gasket scrapers and they're showing that it, uh, the gasket uh, be removed with a proper gasket scraper tool. My favorite tool which they tell you not to use is a razor blade. Okay, I would recommend that you don't do one without the extra uh, little lip on here so that you can hold it properly. These would be pretty dangerous. But the problem with the razor blade is that what Honda's saying and, and everybody's saying, it could be Suzuki, Arctic, anybody, is that people are going in a forward motion and what they're doing is they're digging into that. That little razor blade with your force is going to dig in there and create a problem It's going to groove it. Watch how I'm going to use this and you're going to see how easy this is to, to clean. When I use the razor blade, I get it flat on the surface okay, and I'm going to drag it. Do you see how much material I got off that right now? And then when I look how look how much I took off with almost no effort. Okay, and I haven't even used a chemical yet. Okay, now so you can kind of drag this along the side, and it's going to get our excess off. You're going to see gasket material left over. So you think, well, shoot, you know that's not good, right? What that is is a great opportunity for you guys to learn about what I'm talking about about those machining grooves. When that cutter comes across here. It leaves those little microscopic grooves that you can't see. That's all the gasket sealer is actually trying to fill. All this excess that's all over the place is way too much gasket sealer. I have a tip that I'm going to show you on assembly of how to properly put sealant on where you don't have all that excess spitting all over. You'll get a good seal and you use the minimal amount of gasket. When I use a ton of gasket uh, sealer on here, focus right here, do you see how it's spilled inside the engine? Mm -hmm. Over time, is there a chance that's going to break off? Yeah. And where's it go? Into the engine. Into the engine, flung around, plugs holes, gets in bearings and seals, and it's a problem. Okay, so we do not want sealant to spew in the engine. And when it spews outside the engine, would you say it looks crappy? Yeah. Okay, so I'm at this point with a razor blade with next to no effort. Then what I recommend you do, you have a choice, carb cleaner or brake cleaner. I find that carb cleaner works better. Uh, because brake cleaner dries really fast, it evaporates. Now the thing I don't do is I don't typically spray on the product because what I'm concerned about is my parts around, people around, other workbenches. If, if I'm working right here and there's a gas tank over here, do I have to have big precautions? Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to saturate the rag, pretty heavy here, and now watch. So the little bit of gasket that was in the groove, in the machining marks, what do you think? Yeah. You know, Dirty. you can see this tiny little bit, you really get the lines, I call it the crosshatch or machining marks of the, of the machining. Now right here is good. You can see there's a little bit still in there that has no effect, it's, it's not going to cause any problems. If you do this to this whole case and to the matching one, you're going to have a good surface to be able to re-put sealant on, put it back together, not have any problems. I want to give you one bit of precaution is on these engines, we've talked about this a little bit and we haven't really focused on We talked about our dial pins. What do we say that those are for? Brian's halfway there, locating. I'd like you to add a word to that. Precision. 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 Okay, so they're precision locators because we're professionals and we're working on that, right? We're going to precisely be able to line these case halves up so that the crankshaft is perfectly straight from this case to this case. Extremely important. It prevents us from being able to be off this way, off this way. We're going to be per, uh, precisely machined. So when they machine this half and they machine this half, you understand that that sealant is going to add a little height to it. I mean, thousands of an inch. I mean, next to nothing, but it is an assembled design into that engine. Go ahead and use your gasket scraper too. You know, just kind of at least practice with it if you've never used one before so you can see the difference on what you like to do. All right.